Hello and welcome to lecture three in the Exploring SMath uh, video series. In this video, we're just going to continue on some of the topics from lecture two. In particular, look at, in particular, just looking at a few uh, examples of simple SMath operations and uh, unit definitions and defining functions, variables, etc. Okay, so for uh, so for these examples, we're going to use two examples. Uh, one relatively mundane, the other. Um, a little less mundane, maybe a little out of this world, if you will. Uh, but we'll go ahead and take a look at this. So example one here, what do we have? Well, we have a simple structure. We have a uh, building that is, um, well, it's a relatively simple, uh, a re relatively simple floor plan. We have a rectangular building um, with a courtyard in the middle and actually a relatively small building, right? That's actually really small to have a courtyard in the middle, but we don't, thankfully we don't have to worry about such things because this is just a mathematical example. So we have a building that is um, 40 feet wide and uh, or 40 feet long and 20 feet wide with a courtyard in the middle that is um, 10 feet wide and 20 feet long. And then um, from the elevation, that's, that's the plan view. And then from the elevation view, we can see that its uh, entire surface is covered with brick. Now, uh, in reality, there would of course be windows in this building, but because this is just an example meant to be illustrate the workings of SMath rather than any kind of uh, realistic building calculation, this is just a simple, uh, simple structure. So, um, basically, we have this structure that is ba all along the perimeter, inside and out, is a facade of brick. The brick are four inches thick when we, we are told the specific weight uh, of the brick is 120 pounds per cubic foot. All right, so there's that. And uh, so this is what we're given. And what are we trying to find? What I want to know is the total weight of all bricks uh, used in the building. OK, so in other words, we have uh, we have we know all their mention. We know all of our dimensions. We know we have a courtyard of a certain width and length. We know we have a building of a certain width of length. We know the height of the building, and we know the bricks are four inches thick, and we know the density, or more precisely, the specific weight of bricks. So let us work through this using, again, relatively simple calculation techniques. Um, but again, the point is not really to demonstrate the calculation. The point is to demonstrate the use of SMath. OK, so I'm going to start by, well, we already illustrated one concept in SMath, which is uh, defining uh, text uh, boxes or text uh, fields. Um, and again, we do that just by, um, if I were to delete this again and redefine, rewrite it, I could, again, we, we find this by putting a quotation mark to create a text box. And then we just say, uh, find, uh, let's say, find the weight of bricks. Now, I'm going to go through and enter a series of variables, functions, and I'm going to define, I'm going to have labels and uh, functions and variables along with them. So let's go ahead and define some variables. Um, let's say uh, building width, and I entered this as a text box using, uh, again, the, I entered this as a text box by first putting a, uh, a quotation mark down. And again, the key thing about a text box is that nothing in here represents a, any kind of variable or quantity that SMath is going to try to perform any mathematical operations on. And let's see, I'm going to give this the variable, uh, let's see, for width, let's just do W sub B for width. And the width of the building is going to be 20 feet. Now, as you remember from last time, if when I want to actually define a variable, I've got a little ahead of myself, I enter, uh, I enter my variable first, my name first, and I, or, or I could also use the colon first to create one of these. But I usually just put in a W, or the, the variable, and then um, I'm going to use subscripts. So I'm going to use my period and uh, put a B then to indicate a, a particular type of width, which is the width of the building. And there's going to be a corresponding width of the courtyard as well. So the width of the building then is 40 feet. Now, when I'm defining units, again, what I need to do is I need to first uh, enter a description of the unit or the, a short name of the unit. And I need to make sure that I define the unit properly. So I can either go here and click the unit that I want in the suggestion box, or I can place, press Shift Enter. And 
if it worked properly, I should have a blue high, uh, a blue unit here. And we do, do see that this is blue. It has been properly uh, defined. Okay, let me exit flux so we can see that a little better. Okay, that's a lot better. Sorry about that. Had the night uh, filter on. We're definitely recording a little late tonight. Anyway, so um, the building width is 40 feet, and then we can see that there is a, clue, a, a clear blue uh, tint on that element. Okay, now let us define the corresponding width, which will, will be the courtyard width. So I'm going to enter a text box, uh, courtyard width, and I'll have, I'm going to call this one W sub C for the width of the courtyard, and this is going to be 10 feet. Oh, if I can keep from making stupid errors, that would help. The uh, width of this is 20 feet, not 10 feet, uh, assuming that we're using this as width and this as length. Okay, so there's that. And I'm going to quickly proceed to do the same for the length. Um, and I can, you know what, I can actually, if I want to save a little time, I can select all of these, copy and paste, then just edit this here to length. If I can manage to spell the word length properly. And do the same thing again here. Courtyard length and width. And I'm going to enter, now, I want to replace this W with an L. So I'm going to enter here and make sure my cursor is right on with the W there. I'm going to make sure I get that and yep, that works successfully. So I now have my building length and that is now going to be 40 feet for my building length. And my courtyard length should be 20 feet. So L, get rid of W. L sub C for the length of the courtyard is going to be 20 feet. Double check everything. I have my weight of my, well, I keep wanting to say, I keep wanting to say weight for W, but no, width of the building is 20 feet. Uh, the width of the courtyard is 10 feet. The length of the building is 40 feet and the length of the courtyard is 20 feet. So we have all of our, so we have all of our um, quantities defined correctly. Then uh, what else? I'm just going to use one single value for height in this case. And the reason for that is because this is a simple building and the height of the courtyard is going to be the same as the height of the, uh, of the uh, exterior wall of the building as a whole. So I'm just going to use a single H for this and that is 12 feet. Again, when I define a variable, let's review this one more time. I set, I select, I first put it down a, a, a variable or, or sorry, I, I start by just typing the letter H on my keyboard. Then I press colon to, to summon the, uh, or to call up the uh, is defined as symbol. And then I go and I, in, I input my measure or my value, and that's going to be 12. And then I enter my unit, which is going to be feet. I, I first enter either the label for it or a partial label for it. And once the, I either then select the label, uh, or the actual unit from the uh, shortcut menu here, the suggestion menu, or I go and if I have the full unit actually written out, I press shift enter and I have um, now defined this correctly. Okay, so if I wanted to put a section header on this, I might call this um, building, building dimensions. So this is not, the section is now titled building dimensions. And if I don't like that, the way that under, and I, and I could make that an underline, I could make that bold, I, or I could even make it italic, but just standard text options. So I have a section here labeled building dimensions, and that's where all of the basic building inputs are going to be stored. Now, um, I'm going to start actually calculating a few things. Although, actually, you know what, I probably want to keep all, it's, usually it's good to keep all of your inputs together. So I'm going to put a, um, I'm going to re, I'm going to call this um, building dimensions slash inputs. And I'm going to say, okay, um, I'm going to add a brick, a, a, a text box for the, for the brick thickness. So I'll say brick thickness. We'll need that later. And I'm just going to call that T sub B and that's going to be equal to four inches. If I can get everything set up properly, T sub B is equal to four inches. And then I need the specific weight of brick. 
And so I'm just gonna call that um, brick specific weight. And I'm gonna use gamma for this. So I'm gonna go over to my uh, menu of, uh, Greek al of Greek letters. And I like using gamma for specific weight. And so I'm just gonna call that gamma sub B. Now we're gonna see where things get a little fun. Okay, we're gonna have to be extra careful in this because, um, well, I suppose technically in this case it wouldn't matter, but um, S math is a little tricky when it comes to pounds. Uh, this is one area where the metric system definitely does things a lot better than the English system uh, in terms of avoiding so certain um, unit clashes. Uh, see, S math is a is based on metric, and um, because of that, that does introduce uh, one slight complication because it does handle all the unit conversions automatically. In um, in S math, a pound. Let's actually let's take a look at this. Um, this is the best way I can illustrate this. Let's call, let's define a variable A as seven pounds. Let's see what happens. So if I say A is seven pounds, let's look what happens if I then go and say, okay, I want to just, if, if we remember from last time that first, if I just put A, A is, uh, the symbol means A is defined as seven pounds. Now, um, usually when you use pounds, we're talking about pound force not pound mass. We're using a um, pound to refer to a unit of force. Um, not, uh, so um, technically I should be able to, con if I wanted, if I, if it, with a program like SMath that is actually considering exact definitions of units and relationships between, I should be able to convert pounds to newtons, but I shouldn't be able to convert pounds to kilograms. So look here. If I just tell it to display A in uh, just its default unit, it's saying that a pound has the same dimensions as a kilogram. Hmm. What happens if I try to do it in Newtons? I'm going to select Newtons and it produces a little error here. Well, it's not so much an error. It has to add extra factors, basically canceling out the acceleration due to gravity. So what this shows us is that if you just put pounds, and it did pop up on the screen actually a little bit here. We can see this here is that this pound, just the uh, just the LB is the pound mass. Uh-oh. Hmm. So this is a little bit strange, I know, but um, our, uh, it's personally, I wouldn't have written the program this way, but it is the way it works. And so um, the uh, LB, just pounds, is the same as the LBM, the pound mass. They're both pound masses. So if you want to actually have a pound force, you have to go and select LBF. And now I have something that will convert directly to Newtons, the, the metric unit of force. So again, if I want to do something that has pounds in it, um, if I want, if I really, now if I really want pound mass, I can just use pounds or probably just use pound mass. But if I, but usually when you use pounds, we're talking about, um, the force unit. And so we need to be very careful to use pound force when we use pounds. Okay. So because of that, um, I want to define, um, this gamma in terms of pounds per cubic foot. So I'm going to enter my uh, my measure or my value 120, and then I want pound force per foot cubed. Pound force per foot cubed, and I can double check this is working because if I ask this to convert to newtons uh, per meter. Cubed. Oh, I forgot to do my my shift enter on this. It works. If I if I if I want to double check, I can always go back to the other. I can basically use one unit system to check that I've entered it correctly in another. And I know that newtons per cubic meter is um, the correct uh, is is a force over a volume. So as long as it can do that conversion, I know that I have at least the correct dimensions on my value. A little now that's over, overly complicated for this particular trivial case, but for other more complicated things that can be useful. Okay, so this is basically all of my inputs. This is everything the problem gave me, 
And that should be everything I need to actually go and calculate the final result. So I'm just going to go ahead and put uh, break this down in a few sections. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little text box for a, a section header. And I am going to, um, actually, I think I can probably, probably just put all this, everything else in one section. So I'm going to say, um, uh, let's see, I'm going to call this uh, solving for brick weight. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is I want to create a perimeter uh, and this will also show how to create this basic this uh, uh, section will show how to create functions defined from variables but also how you can use smath to create functions defined from other functions so if I uh, now we could do this in innumerable ways I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to first calculate the perimeter of the inside then calculate the perimeter of the outside add them up Calculate the total area, then calculate the volume, then calculate the weight from that. Okay, so let's look at that. Um, so I'm going to say the courtyard perimeter. Um, I guess because I did building first, we'll do that first. Building perimeter. And I'll use the variable capital P for this. So P, now I do have to be careful. Um, I don't want to, I, I want to make sure that I'm not selecting a poise or... I don't know, a Pascal or something like that. So I don't want to just do a control enter here. I want to make sure I click colon to actually define a new function for P. And P here, then it will actually, I don't want just P. I want P sub B for the perimeter of the building. And that's going to equal two times W sub B plus two times L sub B. Twice the building's width plus twice the building's length and that will be the perimeter of the outside of the building. Now, I could leave this in meters if I wanted, but I'm going to go ahead and do this in feet. I'm using uh, English units in this example, but I'll just go ahead. So I'll just go ahead and add the uh, well, not the conversions, but the displays. Again, as a reminder, if I don't have this, what is happening is when I click equals, the, this sign here means uh, that I entered with the colon means um, is defined as. But then if I just put an equal sign, I'm saying, okay, this is defined as perimeter of the building is defined as twice the width, its width plus twice its length. And then this equal sign just says, okay, this thing, this is defined as this, what does it actually equal? And by default, it wants to output in metric, but if I wanted to output in, in uh, feet or inches or anything else, I just go and tell it what unit I want. So this is then 120 feet. That is the exterior perimeter of the building, which, if you think about it, does make sense. That does add up properly. Then um, let's do the courtyard perimeter. I'm just going to do a very similar calculation. In fact, I'll just go ahead and copy this. Um, the courtyard perimeter, put, let's replace all our Bs with Cs. Get your cursor down there and replace the Bs with Cs and Bs with Cs. And we can see that the courtyard is uh, has a perimeter of 60 feet. So these are functions based on uh, single variables. But really, the way SMath represents functions is really no different than the way it represents variables. They're just quantities in relationship to each other. So next, I'm going to go ahead and define another function, but it's actually being defined in terms of the values produced from these other functions here, PB and PC. I'm going to say overall perimeter or overall wall perimeter. And I'm just going to use the single variable capital P. P is defined as P sub B plus P sub C, the sum of the perimeters of um, the building and the courtyard. And again, that's just done by uh, a colon to create the symbol. I just enter a colon in my key on my keyboard to um, enter this symbol or to create this symbol, which means is defined as P, the function P is defined as the sum of P sub B plus P sub C. Then I press equals to display the result. And uh, if I want, I can then change the unit and put this as feet. And again, usually what I do is I press, uh, when I have what I want, I press uh, control enter or shift enter or sometimes just enter. So that's the buildings, the overall walls at a perimeter. Now I want the walls surface area 
and that can be achieved just by multiplying the uh, the perimeter times the height. So I'm just going to use the variable. Uh, let's, I'm going to keep this relatively simple and just use the variable capital A, and that's just going to be p times. Um, that's going to be p times uh, the wall height h. So I'm multiplying a length times a length, so I should get a unit of area, and I do. I get meters squared, which I'll then ask it to display as feet squared, and that's uh, that. So I now know the total area of the wall. Finally, I'm going to calculate, well, second to last step, I'm going to calculate the uh, volume of the brick, um, which seems a little odd to think about, but it will, be, it'll, it will allow us to calculate the overall weight of the brick of the building which is, since this is four inches thick, we just need to multiply the area times the thickness. So total volume of brick. I'm going to use the variable V, uh, just to keep things simple. Actually, uh, yeah, that'll work. I'm just gonna use the variable V for this, and this is going to equal uh, be equal to A times T sub B. And again, all of our variable names are arbitrary. We can call them whatever we want, um, I'm just actually picking whatever variable names ha just happen to pop into my head at the moment. Um, but, uh, you know, some of these may make, may, uh, sound, may make more or less sense to you and you would probably call them different things if you were creating this sheet. But again, all of this is arbitrary. It's just how things are, it's just labels for how uh, data values are stored within SMath. And let's think about this. I am multiplying a quantity that has dimensions of feet squared by a quantity that has dimensions of length. So this should produce a quantity with a uh, with dimensions of length to the third power. So, and knowing since S math, since F math is doing this in metric, when I output this, it should output something in cubic meters. And what do you know? It does. And uh, again, this is a reminder of the usefulness of a program like this. And that it is taking care of all of the unit calculations, or sorry, unit conversions. Look what's going on here. It's taking one one unit or one uh, quantity in inches here, the TV, multiplying by another qu unit, uh, another quantity uh, with units of square feet, multiplying them together uh, to create a um, to create a quantity with uh, well, it probably actually converts everything to cubic meters first. But then if I actually want the result in cubic feet, and that'll be very useful for our final calculation, I just put cubic feet and I don't have to work. I don't have to multiply by a single cubed conversion factor. I don't have to do like a, you know, one twelfth. I don't have to multiply by, you know, one over twelfth to the third power or something like that. It just takes care of all of it. As long as I define all of my initial units correctly, and I set things up properly, it will be able to handle all of the unit conversions. Finally, I want to go ahead and um, calculate the weight of the brick. And so I can just do a brick weight, again, a text box. And I'll just use a capital W for this. Being, being uh, careful not to select the unit watts as that would uh, make things a little bit harder and so i'm just going to multiply v times uh, our specific weight value which we used gamma sub b um and so gamma now um i have a couple options and oh look i can actually go and uh, i could enter the subscript on the b or i could just go to enter the suggestions menu and select gamma sub b as well this gamma, I think, is actually still floating around the, from uh, the previous lecture I recorded. Okay, so gamma sub b there. Now, uh, let's think again, let's think back to units or more specifically dimensions. I am multiplying a uh, length to the third power, a volume, uh, times a weight per volume. So the results I, I get should be weight or more specifically a force. And that's exactly what I get. I get uh, newtons. I get a, um, I get a result in newtons because I'm multiplying a weight per cubic, uh, I'm, I'm multiplying a volume times a weight per volume and I get the result in newtons. Again, it tends to do everything by default in uh, metric, 
but get to get the result you want is fairly straightforward. All I have to do is, ah, what do I do now? What think to what I said about handling, um, about handling pounds. Pounds are a particular, um, particular bone of contention in S math. So do be do be careful with this. Again, if I try to put in just pounds, it's going to give me this weird unit because what's happening is, it's it's seeing that I am. It's basically saying. It's interpreting that as uh, me saying, me telling it, okay, SMATH, I want you to give me this value in pounds. And it's going to say, I'm sorry, no can do. Uh, I, think a, I think a pound is a pound mass. And there is no way I can convert a unit of force, newtons, into pound mass. They're not the same thing. So I have to add this extra um, meter over second squared to make the units work right. And it's going to tack those extra units, these, those extraneous units on if you are asking it to do something that is uh, that is incompatible units. So instead, I need to just go and ask it. Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and say uh, this is defined, then it's equal, and then I'm going to want the result in pound force, and then I have a final result that does make sense. All right, so again, um, what I did in this problem was I started with entering all of my values or defining all of my initial values as variables. Then I defined a series of functions um, that I defined a series of functions that uh, work through the necessary calculations to, to produce the final uh, desired result. Now, um, again, let us review the usefulness of a program like this. Let's say I was designing a lot of buildings like this. Now, you usually don't design a lot of buildings like this, but this would be useful if you're doing a lot of the same calculation uh, again and again. Um, actually, an, an example like this that we did um, when I was working in industry was we we did a lot of pipe support calculations, which are these, uh, or we did a lot of calculations for pipe supports, which were these, uh, well, basically a series of steel sections welded together and bolted together to form, um, you know, supports for pipes. It's what's in the it's what's on the box, what's in the name, and. Um, but we would have we ended up doing the same calculation with slight with slightly different variance, variations many different times and this was a very easy way to automate the calculations because if i want to then go and work through and do the same calculation for a building with uh 25 with the 25 feet boom all of my calculations automatically adjust or let's say i'm a, uh, I'm a structural engineer I'm trying to get the weight of the brick, and I suddenly get a call from the architect saying, oh, actually, uh, the client decided they want to change the veneer of the building, and uh, they actually want to use bricks that are uh, five inches thick instead of three inches thick. Now, if I had a really long calculation done by hand that all of this stuff was dependent on, in reality, I probably wouldn't stop here. I'd probably have way, many, many pages of calculations that use this number as a follow, as a input. Um, and if I was doing all that by hand, then um, I would have to redo all those calculations. But if I get a call from the architect saying, hey, the client decided they actually want to use these different, break, these different bricks, and they actually have a thickness of five inches, but they have the same density, I say, no problem. I pull up my sheet, replace four with five, and I am done. And that is the value of a program like SMATH.